The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 270 Dubious Aid. Valet woke up in the practiced manner she had used for her entire life. Step one Play dead. Did her cutie mark say she was in danger? No. Someone who knew about her trigger could still be trying to get her with a non harmful but incredibly annoying prank. Think further. She had friends now, and her mark wouldn't warn about things happening to them. Her brain put the finishing touches on her train of thought as she prepared to launch it while her faculties automatically took note of the area around her. Quiet? Fairly? Cold? Sort of? Light? Wait, why was there light shining against her eyelids? She hissed internally, heartbeat rising. One of her favorite tricks was to slip into shadow while appearing to be asleep. It was nearly instantaneous and hard to stop. Preemptively shining a giant flickering light on her was a great way to actually do it. Someone had trapped her. Unfortunately for that someone, she wasn't feeling in a patient mood. All right! In a single sudden movement, she bolted upright. What's the big wow? And promptly fell on her face, her limbs and body partially ensnared by shroudy wrappings. Hey! Don't, a lone Pegasus mare said, sitting by the light source, which turned out to be a fire. The longer you leave them on, the more good they'll do you. Meh? Valet's face crunched in confusion. The mare sat straighter, stirring a pot over the fire that Valet realized smelled quite good. Combat medication. The bandages are for all your cuts and scrapes. Designed to get you back on your hooves quickly in a fight, if not actually heal you. It's the least I could do. Wait, what? Valet narrowed her eyes, quickly taking stock of Starlight's limp form before looking back at the mare. She gnawed her lip, hummed, made eye contact, tried to scratch her mane, and blinked. Hey, I know you. You used to front the snack bar in the defense for its lobby before Selma fired you, like, a month ago. I didn't know you were in my new fan club. I'm not, the mayor sighed, and it's Varsidelian war technology. They don't export it since they need everything for themselves, so it's not very common in other nations. It's useful, though, if you get into trouble a lot. Huh. Thinking, Valet checked herself over again. She had chalked it up to a nap, but maybe she did feel significantly better than she had before. Hardly perfect, but better. Okay, that's cool. So what's all this about, then? This is about you sparing my friends when you had no reason to, and it put you in danger, the mayor muttered, stirring at whatever she was cooking. I'm grateful for that. So even though I don't like you, I'm trying to return the favor. Vully blanched. Sparing your friends? Hold on, if you mean... A mercenary company, she finished with a nod, staring into her pot. I don't know or care how you managed the teleportation spell of that magnitude. It had to have been harder than just killing us. I know for a fact you caught my sister in a hallway, shoved her companions under the floor, disabled her, had her alone, and just left. There weren't that many of us. Taking one out would have made a difference. You didn't. She swallowed, still staring. Ha! Huh. Valet frowned. You know, you dudes kind of inconvenienced me in more ways than one. Are you seriously wanting to help me now? Not that I couldn't use it, but it seems shady. Maybe, the mayor said and left it at that. Yeah, no. I'm gonna need more than maybe to roll with, Valet announced, picking yourself up and starting to pace, mindful of the slightly itchy bandages. Spill the beans here. What's going on? You mean, why did I track you down, fly you and your friends somewhere safer, and start helping you when I could have just captured or killed you like we were supposed to? She shook her head and sighed. I wasn't in that party directly, for medical reasons. So, it wasn't my job. So I don't have to and can do what I want, because that's the way my mercenary company works. But even if you ran into the ones who do need to fight you, they might not. We were already reluctant. There was one job too far, and it was a miracle that everyone survived. If we were asked to do it again... Valet winked. Um, that's scary, huh? You have a reputation, the Pegasus deadpan. Yeah, well, seriously. Valet sighed and flopped back down. Screw that reputation. The moment I get tired of being the bad guy and try to stick up for someone decent for a change, there's a bajillion elite mook stomping at my tail and then all my friends get blown up and now the best two are basically comatose 
And there's also a cheery griffin, and I'm stuck playing therapist for a really angsty unicorn, and... Ah! She held her head in her hooves, complaining loudly. Why is it so hard to just bail on Iron Ridge already? I want out! You tell me, the Pegasus said with a shrug. We would have left hours ago, except someone appears to have stolen our airship from the Sky District. Most of the team is there now, trying to find any clues. Valet opened her mouth to suggest she might know where Selma put it, but it was interrupted by a little voice. For the record, I'm awake, Starlight grumbled, sounding like she was about to explode from frustration. Whoa, you're alive! Valet whirled on her, trailing loose bandages like streamers. I mean, you better be, but finally! Aunt Flanks is looking super sad with her paralysis and stuff and could totally use a little cheering up. She trailed off, noticing that Starlight wasn't bothering to get up or even open her eyes. You are okay, aren't you? No! Starlight gritted, tensing against the ground. I can't feel my horn! I can't even feel it if I bang it against the ground! Every other time I use it too much, it feels terrible, but now it feels like it's gone! I think it's broken completely. Oh, uh, very good, Valet mumbled, crouching down next to her, her moonglass pendant dangling against the ground. It isn't, right? Because technically, if I had the choice between a super terrible headache and not at all... Starlight opened her eyes, staring just far enough off to Valet's side to be disconcerting. I also can't see. Valet blinked, twice, and paled, waving a hoof in front of Starlight's face that the filly utterly failed to track. Oh, bananas, you aren't kidding. Uh... She was up earlier than you, the Pegasus said. We talked about it. It doesn't seem enviable, but there isn't anything I can do. Well, meh. Valise slumped, briefly sharing Starlight's dejection. Oh, well, if it's not lethal, we can probably deal with it later. Just don't turn into an edge horse about it and you'll survive. Really, I don't need another sad pony to try to cheer up. She patted Starlight's head, then turned to the Pegasus. So, uh, you know we were actually waiting for some other friends, right? I can't help but notice you moved us quite a ways. She glanced around for emphasis. They were on a flat rooftop in some western Earth District town, removed from the flooding and with a metal brazier the Pegasus was using to safely burn her fire. The dark shadow of Karma Industries provided an outline in the distance, still drawing some light from the sky despite the heaviness of the storm above. I left a note, the Pegasus said, just in case. It said you were taking care of business and would find them again when you were ready. Ah, uh, well, great, Valet slumped, sighing. And I suppose when I'm ready involves sitting around a while longer while you whip up something to patch me up? The Pegasus shrugged, lifting her ladle and tasting the pot's contents. This is food, not medicine, though if you haven't been eating, I thought it would help too. Since Valet's plan for reconnecting with Maple and Gerardo had just been reduced to look for an airship and their primary goal was staying safe, she decided that didn't sound so bad. Sitting down and scooching closer, she licked her lips. Well, if we're really going to be midnight snack buddies, did I actually get your name? The Pegasus sniffed. Bourbon. Hmm. Mm. Right, Barpony. Did you know I'm bad with names? Valet knocked on the side of her head as if expecting her brain to fall out of her ear. I totally knew that, by the way. But, so, like, while we're waiting for all that to be done, do you want to tell me a little more about all this mercenary stuff? Is it really as simple as Herman wanting me smushed? Bourbon nodded. We're a fairly large band, usually between 40 and 50. About half of us are from Yakakistan, a quarter from Varsadel, and the other quarter from everywhere else. Our leader is a griffin named Caro. I don't know if he has royal blood, but he's from the Griffin Empire and certainly has important connections there. With how many ponies we have, it's rare that all of us are needed to transfer a job, so Caro handles all our official contracts and assigns individual jobs to make sure they get carried out. Usually, we don't even know what our friends are working on unless we tell each other directly. Mostly, we figure out for ourselves what's happening inside the company. I think it's a system designed to let us take jobs that require a lot more secrecy without it looking conspicuous when someone tries to hide something. 
Or it could just be no one wanting to do the work of keeping us filled in. She took another sip from her ladle. Maybe Herman gave us the job? Maybe someone else did? You certainly have a lot of enemies. You don't say, Valet groaned. That didn't earn a smile. You know, my cold friend was also down there in the flame district, she said. You force-fed him a banana peel. He was also present a while ago at the snack bar when you were talking about the undersides of my wings. Thank you for sparing him, but that's how you make enemies. Not a lot of ponies like you, Valet. Even us, and we're only alive because of you. Cool, irately, Valet tapped the ground. So, Anonymous Detractor, maybe, named Herman, tells you guys to off me, and you try it, just like that. Not just any Anonymous Detractor, Bourbon said with a shake of her head. Ironrich has worn a group thin. Kieran knew he needed to leave, and he knows he has to pay us. He wouldn't accept a job this risky for us unless he would pay very generously. She met Valet's eyes. But we're not trying to kill you right now. If you'll take my advice on survival, sneak around and worry about bigger things. She sniffed the pot again. Also, the soup's done. End of chapter 270